How do the Denver Broncos match up with the Miami Dolphins? We take a look at our tale of the tape. Plus, we hear from Broncos linebacker Josie Jewell and offensive tackle Mike McGlinchey on today's brand new episode, Locked on Broncos. You are locked on Broncos, your daily Denver Broncos podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up, Broncos country? Welcome into a brand new episode of Locked On Broncos, your daily Denver Broncos podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you so much to everybody in Broncos country for tuning in, making us your first listen of the day. Every single day, you can get this podcast for free on YouTube or wherever you get your podcast. So do us a favor, hit that subscribe or that follow button down below so you never miss out on a day's worth of Broncos news, content coverage, analysis, and more every single day all year long. I'm your host, as always, Cody Work, Broncos reporter for Mile High Sports. Joined alongside, as always, by my co-host, Sarah Bettinger, site expert, predominantlyorange.com. Today's episode show is brought to you by the Game Time app. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code LOCKEDONNFL for $20 off your first purchase. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. What does the tale of the tape tell us ahead of Sunday's showdown in South Beach? The Broncos offense taking on an electrifying defense. It has a lot of big time playmakers, I think, on the back end, a young emerging safety in Javon Holland, former Broncos familiarity face. There we talk about Bradley Chubb, Vic Fangio, and obviously Jalen Phillips expected to be back for them this week. So a, a tough test overall here for Denver, but I said I think the best way to look at this matchup, and I'm curious because we're going to do this every single week here on the show. We're going to look at where the teams match up ranking wise for each unit. Denver's offense against Miami's defense, essentially, in terms of some more important metrics here. But Sarah, let's take a look at yards per game here for the Broncos offense against the Dolphins defense. What does the tail of the tape tell us? Well, the Broncos offense putting up decent numbers, right? 16th in the league at this point with 329.5 yards per game. And the Dolphins, as we know, they put up a lot of points. They move the ball a lot. And what's that going to mean? That means your defense is going to be on the field quite a bit. And they've given up a lot of yards over the first two weeks of the NFL season. Kind of had a shootout in week one, followed by a defensive matchup against the Patriots in week two, in which they've averaged a, a collective total of 360.5 yards per game, 24th in the NFL. And as we heard from Sean Payton on Wednesday, you know, they don't often start throwing these numbers up until week four or five because you get a better idea of a larger sample. But at the same time, you can see that, hey, through two weeks, the Dolphins have proven they can get into a shootout with teams and they'll give up the yards if it means putting the ball back in their offense's hands or if you want to play small ball, they can do that as well. And I think their defense can kind of adapt and adjust under Vic Fangio. Well, I'm glad that you mentioned, hey, like you want a larger sample size of this, right? Because I posted and I shared a little bit earlier this week the rankings on social media where Denver's defense was, where Denver's offense was in certain categories. And they're like, oh, this is bad. This is horrible. Well, it's just through two weeks, right? So the sample size is very small. I'm always a big proponent on saying, okay, I think we'll have a true factor on maybe where these teams are at. And obviously we're going to focus on Denver throughout the entire season, but where Denver eventually is and maybe what type of team they are come like week eight, week nine, when the buy comes around, what do these rankings look like from a statistical standpoint, then that will kind of define who this team is this season. And, and yeah, I mean, net yards per game. I mean, right now, Miami, they're allowing a lot of yards in the run game so far. So, Hey, it's a perfect key for Denver. Go pound the rock. Go run the dang football with Javante Williams, Samaje P. Ryan. Get you a little involved. Pound it inside. They've given up some yards there. And obviously, they have a talented defense. So, I mean, if you look at their players' tackle numbers so far, I mean, Sarah, it is unbelievable how many players have double-digit tackles on that defense right now for the Miami Dolphins. So, they're flying to the football. They're pursuing. That's what Vic Fangio wants them to do here. But now let's get into a metric here through two weeks points per game. When you look at where Denver's at offensively, they're averaging 24.5 points per game, which, hey, I mean, through two weeks, we already know week one, 16 points, the dreaded 16. So where did this 24 come? Well, they obviously had a 33 point outing. This might be different if Russ didn't connect on that Hail Mary, right? So 24.5, I think if Denver can get to 24, 25 points per game as they're like median throughout the entire season, that's a better spot to be. And I think that most people are going to give the Broncos credit for, but they're going to have to adjust defensively you look at where Miami's at right now defensively they're allowing 25.5 points per game and really that number is skewed a little bit from that 30 point allowance to the Los Angeles Chargers there in week one so 
I mean, I think these numbers are deceptive, right? And I think a lot of people, yes, you can look at maybe what Miami's been able to do. I don't think a lot of people are giving the Broncos a chance in this game. I think everybody, for the most part, is going to pick the Dolphins when they do their pick I think this has makings for a potential trap game for the Dolphins here early on in the season. And so I think if Denver's offense can be efficient and not go through some of the lows they did, or obviously in week two, Denver might actually surprise some people here. But here's also another telling factor, right? When you look at where Denver's at, one thing they cannot have happen is letting the Miami Dolphins defense generate sacks on Russell Wilson. I mean, we talked about Russ last week. He was sacked seven times, hit 14 times from the quarterback standpoint. You look at that Miami Dolphins defense, they have six players right now, Sarah, who have at least one sack, and then they have two players who each have a half sack. That right there is unbelievable production from a multitude of different players. That could be a potential recipe for disaster if Denver can't stop that. And I think that speaks to your point of why the Broncos really need to emphasize running the ball, right? It's really got to be something that they go to early and often in this game, not only because you want to avoid Russell Wilson taking hits, but you want to keep that Dolphins offense off the field, right? You want to keep your defense off the field in that Miami South Beach heat. So, Cody, that's where I think it's going to come up huge for the Broncos. And look, we've seen Vic Fangio's defense before. We know areas that he excels. We know that oftentimes he's going to be willing to let you kind of dink and dunk down the field if that's what you're going to do. But a lot of times tightening up in the red zone, right? And making, you know, turning six, seven points into three points or no points by getting stops as you get closer. The Dolphins, though, so far this season, they rank 30th in the NFL allowing third downs at a 53.3% rate, whereas the Broncos are converting at over 39.1%. So middle of the road, 16th in the NFL. And then in the red zone, the Broncos at 57.1%, 18th in the league at converting red zone opportunities into touchdowns. But the Dolphins, Cody, they have allowed 85.7% of opportunities converted in the red zone. So you get into the red zone against the Dolphins, atypical of what we have seen from Vic Fangio defenses. We are seeing teams get into the end zone consistently, and the Broncos are going to have to capitalize on those chances. It's going to be like going up against a really good pitcher in baseball. If you get an opportunity to score, man, you can't settle for three. You can't you can't play small ball. You've got to be aggressive and get those runs in or get those points in when you get to the red zone. So that's where I think the Broncos need to make sure their running game is on point. You establish that line of scrimmage early on. Don't let the Dolphins feel like they're going to get an opportunity to just pin their ears back and get after Russell Wilson all day. Pond the rock is the major key here. If Denver can do that, they can keep Tua Tungo Vailoa off the field here. So Broncos country, that segues perfectly into what we're going to talk about here on today's episode of the show. How does the Broncos defense match up statistically against the Miami Dolphins high octane offense? Well, you're going to get that conversation on today's episode. Locked on Broncos. Today's episode of Locked on Broncos is brought to you by our friends over there at the Game Time app. You want to take your wife on a last minute date to a sporting event, a comedy event, or a music event. Game Time has you covered. You want to take your kids to a sporting event. Game Time is the place to be. They have flash deals and last minute tickets. It's also easy to find and buy tickets for every kind of event that's going on in your area. Plus, you get images of your seats inside the app. So if you want to see where you're going to be for that concert or sporting event, you click on the picture and it shows you exactly what your vantage point will be with the Game Time app. Plus, they have the lowest price guarantee, event cancellation protection, and job loss protection. Game Time is the place for last minute ticket deals. Forget planning months in advance. Game Time has deals on tickets right up to the day of the event. You get exclusive flash deals on tickets for football, basketball, baseball, concerts, comedy, theater, and more. Plus, the Game Time guarantee means that you'll always get the best price. If you find tickets in the same section and roll for less, Game Time, they'll credit you up to 110% of the difference. So make sure you snag the tickets without the stress with Game Time here today. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code LOCKEDONNFL for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account, redeem code LOCKEDONNFL for $20 off, download Game Time today, Last-minute tickets, lowest price, guaranteed. Plus, we're going to give a special shout-out to our friends over there at DoorDash. If you're missing the syrup for your pancakes or you just ran out of your favorite coffee creamer, with DoorDash Grocery Delivery, you can get what you want right when you need it. You've trusted DoorDash to deliver your restaurant favorites, and now you can get grocery delivery that actually delivers too. 
with thousands of grocery stores to choose from. You'll find the best in your neighborhood and boost your local economy with each and every order. You'll get exactly what you ordered or we'll make it right. So sit back and enjoy quality groceries just like you picked them yourself. Want even more value? You can save on all your grocery and restaurant favorites with a $0 delivery free on all eligible orders with a Dash Pass membership. With easy substitutions right in the app and best-in-class customer support, DoorDash delivers groceries exactly how you want it. Get 50% off your first DoorDash order up to a $20 value when you use code LOCKEDONNFL at checkout. Limited time offer, terms apply. That's 50% off, up to $20, no minimum subtotal, and zero delivery fees on your first order when you download the DoorDash app in the App Store and enter code LOCKEDONNFL. Don't forget that's code locked on NFL for 50% off your first order with DoorDash. How does the Denver Broncos defense stack up against the Miami Dolphins offense? Is it going to be a long day for Vance Joseph's unit or are the Broncos going to find a way to maybe finally start causing some turnovers, get that ball back to the offense. We're going to talk about that. We're going to break down the numbers, but before we do, Got to give a huge shout out. Cody and I want to say to all of you who make Locked On Broncos your first listen of the day every single day, thank you so much. Wherever and however you join us, Locked On Broncos is free and available wherever you find podcasts, as well as you can watch us on YouTube every single day. Sometimes even some bonus episodes thrown in there, Cody. So, hey, throughout the season, anything that you're looking for, Broncos discussion wise, Cody and I, we're going to talk about it. And you can find other members of Broncos country there for sure on YouTube, sounding off in the discussion. So join the discussion. We thank you and appreciate you for doing that right here on the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every single day. Cody, for the Denver Broncos defense, you're going up against one of the best offenses in the NFL. And I want to set it up by just saying the Miami Dolphins, they're averaging, averaging through two games, 462.5 yards per game. Not bad for a uh, former Denver Broncos ball boy now calling plays out there. Mike McDaniel, he's kind of a wonderkin out there uh, for the Miami Dolphins. And we've seen over the last year plus him reshaping Tua Tagovailoa and that whole offense. Tyreek Hill, arguably the best offensive player in the game. How does the Broncos defense stack up when you look at just in terms of these first couple of weeks there? What, what the Broncos are allowing and what the Dolphins are doing to impose their will? Well, I think it's safe to say, as cliche as it may come across here, is the Broncos can't allow what happened against the Commanders to happen against the Dolphins, or else it's going to be a long, long day here. And look, here's one thing you mentioned, what Mike McDaniel has done with Tua Tonga vailoa With that offense, and I thought you and Kyle Krabs in the crossover episode did a fantastic job of outlining and talking about both sides here. But from my observation, and also what NFL Next Gen Stats says here, Tua Tonga vailoa is getting the ball out of his hands at such a quick rate here. In, in last week, he got the ball out of his hands for an average depth through the air of eight yards at 2.2 seconds, right? So it's snap, it's throwing. And look, when you have speedy guys like Jalen Waddle and Tyreek Hill, it's easy to run those quick outs or those quick across, you know, crossing patterns or quick hitches because Denver, what we've seen them do defensively, they've been playing their cornerbacks off. They've been playing with cushion. I don't think Denver can get away with doing that here, but you're going to have to find balance because you can't play press every time because then you risk the chance of getting burnt for a massive play downfield. It's about give and take here, and I'm very curious to see what Vance Joseph does. But when we talk about, as you mentioned, net yards per game, you mentioned it, 462.5. Like, that is a lot. And look, a lot of that is they're the number one passing offense right now in the NFL, averaging 355 yards through the air. And that's Lou Tua, who many people said, well, he can't just throw. He, he's not a guy who's going to throw the ball downfield a lot. He dices you up in the short to intermediate stuff, and then he takes his chances. Like with Mike McDaniel, they're very surgical in how they do it, which is why when you look at points per game, Miami, they're scoring 30 points per game here, which is third right now in the NFL. I mean, third is 30 points per game. That is nuts to think about here, Sarah. But where Denver's at defensively, they're allowing 26 points per game as well. And that's kind of skewed, I think, from this past week where they allowed 35 to the commanders. I'm very curious to see where this team is at because I don't think that this Denver defense, as bad as last week was, talking to guys in the locker room here, Sarah, this week, I talked to Josie Jew, I talked to other guys, defensive players, the same Bassey. These guys, the, the, the locker room's not panicking. The locker room's not worried. The defense says, you know what, there's a lot of things we got to clean up, but if we clean it up, we know we're a good football team. We know we can beat some teams. So there is that belief inside the locker room, even though that a lot of the fan base that we've seen in our YouTube comments, has lost faith in what they're able to do. And look, a lot of people coming after Vance Joseph, rightfully so, I get the frustration. 
players aren't thinking that way, and they think they can bounce back this week against the Dolphins. It's going to be a tough test, but it's going to be hard if you cannot get after Tua Tonga by Loa. Sarah, what's been so good about him? I mean, he's only been sacked one time so far this season. Denver's got four sacks, which all came really last week in week two against the Commanders. It's going to be hard to get after a guy like Tua in the way they design the offense. You know, I, I'm a bit confused by that, Cody, because who's the offensive line coach there in Miami <laughs> after what we saw last season? What's going on there? Butch Sticky Berry. Butch. Yeah, that's right. I, I mean, man, I guess the Dolphins O-line playing a little better this season than the Broncos O-line did last year under Butch Berry. But, you know, kudos to him, I guess, for figuring it out. And kudos to Tugo, Tua Tagovailoa, Cody, for not taking sacks. I mean, he he makes decisions quickly you you see that when you watch the miami dolphins offense play and even when he does have to take deeper drops he's got really good timing i know he's he doesn't have necessarily the the greatest velocity behind his passes it, he's not like you know josh allen out there or anything rocket firing the ball but just really good timing and he's got good chemistry with his receivers and you see that, right? I mean, they've only allowed one sack this season. They're really solid of just scoring, getting into the red zone. I mean, they, they're they ranked 13th in the NFL this year, converting 62.5% of their red zone opportunities, Cody. But, man, Miami, just they, they don't necessarily even need to get into the red zone. They have some of the, the best big play threats in the NFL. Speaking of, I know you mentioned next-gen stats. I was looking at some next-gen stats myself. We could be in for a bit of a track meet here in this game because out of these two teams, the Broncos and the Dolphins, there are seven plays, seven. I got to fit all my hand on this on the screen here. Seven <laughs> total plays of the most explosive so far this season, meaning these guys are tracking on the GPS. Uh, the Dolphins and the Broncos have seven of the best 12 plays this, this whole season. I know I worded that terribly, but what I'm saying is these guys are all fast. Tyree Kill, Jalen Waddle. Raheem Moster, they've all got the opportunity to strike from far away. So it's not just about making sure you get off the field in red zone or making sure you limit these guys to field goals. It's don't give up home run plays to the Miami Dolphins. Don't you've got to be you got to create turnovers. You got to find a way to disrupt their rhythm. It's it's something that I think is going to be so tough for the Denver defense. But as you said, while everyone's picking against the Broncos in this game, it's an opportunity to go out there and get a signature win. Like uh, after, even after losing to the Raiders and losing to the Commanders in heartbreaking fashion, if you can go to Miami, where the Broncos have been historically terrible in a one o'clock Eastern time playing window, where the Broncos have been historically terrible against the number one offense in the NFL, if you can go in there and get a win, Cody, this is going to be a, a wow, maybe, maybe it did just take some time for Sean Payton, but it's going to be more so on Vance Joseph and that defense this week to come up big and get stops so the offense can get the ball back. Yeah, and we talk about as well, like Denver's defense this season has been pretty good on third down. The only issue for them is that they've allowed other teams to get first downs on like first down and second down. 12 penalties on defense have also attributed to that as well. So Denver's going to have to play a much cleaner game in that capacity and that standpoint here going forward. But I mean, sorry, I think you make a great point there. This could be a track meet. I. I kind of get a vibe a little bit. Remember when the Broncos had just traded away Von Miller and they are going up again, you know, a matchup against the Dallas Cowboys. Like, man, Dallas is going to boat race them. I have a feeling like so many people are overlooking Denver here based on what we saw from the defense in week two that I would not be shocked if Denver went on the road, got the upset victory here, and it changes the entire narrative so far of the season, right? You unfortunately start off 0 2 at home, but if you have a chance to go 2 0 here on the road and all of a sudden, bam, you're back at 500 to set up a matchup in week five against Zach Wilson, the New York Jets, and former head coach Nathaniel Hackett. That's a little bit looking too far ahead here, but I'm saying Denver is in control of their narrative and their destiny in this situation. It's going to come with a big-time performance on Sunday. They need it. They have to find a way to dig it out and find a way to get a victory against a tough Miami Dolphins team here. But Broncos country, we're also going to hear from offensive tackle Mike McGlinchey and Broncos linebacker Josie Jewell. They met with us a little bit earlier on here in the week, and they talked about maybe the ideas – is there any benefits to a road trip that a team can take out of? Is there any benefit of getting out of your normal routine? Plus, what does Denver's defense have to do to adjust? We're going to get all of that and much more on today's episode, Lockdown Broncos. Today's episode of Lockdown Broncos is brought to you by our friends over there at Prize Picks. And Picks is the most fun that I've had winning up to 25 times my money this football season. You just select two or more players 
You pick more or less on their projected stats, and you place your entry. So Broncos country, as we take a look at the Broncos and Miami Dolphins here on Sunday, the matchup under focus in prize picks is going to be between Tua Tungo Vailoa and Russell Wilson. But for Russell Wilson, his passing yard stat line is projected by prize picks to be 230 and a half. Do you think he's going to get more or less than that against the Miami Dolphins? What about Tua Tungo Vailoa? His projected stat line, according to Price Picks, is set at 264 and a half pass yards. Price Picks is where you can run up to 25 times your money if you believe the same thing that I do. They have quick withdrawals, easy gameplay, and they also have an enormous selection of players and stat types that make it easy, which makes it why Price Picks is the number one daily fantasy sports app in the world today. They also offer weekly promotions, and they can also now offer Apple Pay for quick and easy deposits into your account this football season. So make sure you check it out. Go to pricepicks.com slash NFL and use code LockdownNFL for a first deposit match up to $100. Once again, go to pricepicks.com slash NFL and use code NFL for a first deposit match up to $100. As we approach the fourth quarter action on today's episode, Locked On Broncos, Broncos Country, just want to say thank you so much for tuning in, making us your first listen of the day every single day. You can get this podcast once again for free on YouTube or wherever you get your podcast. So make sure you jump in the conversation with other members of Broncos Country, share your thoughts on what's going on. I feel like this week, Sarah, I've kind of taken a little bit of a break from responding to a lot of the YouTube comments. There's a lot of toxicity right now with Denver's 0-2 starting. While I appreciate Broncos Country for tuning in, there's times where I'm just like, you know what? I just don't want to engage with the negativity, the toxicity, because at times, like when you're responding like 60 comments in a row, they're just negative and toxic. It has an impact on your mental health there. But aside from all that, Broncos country, we appreciate you. Whether you're happy that you know where the team is at, if you see where they're going, or if you're upset about what's happened with the team, we appreciate you for rocking with us every single day, all year long. Now, I'd say one thing in terms of what I talked about earlier here on the show, Sarah, is talking to guys in the locker room this week. There's no sense of panic inside the locker room. Yeah, they're 0-2. These guys realize, yeah, we lost two home games. But they also have the mindset that a lot of the things that we're doing that, that are impacting us on offense or defense, those are correctable. Those are self-inflicted versus what an opposing team is doing to them specifically. And so I think there's a, there's a lot of eagerness there inside the building. And obviously, I think a lot of us are going to be very mindful whether or not Justin Simmons plays this week. We know throughout the week in practice, had a hip designation, DNP, that's a big key here for them this week. We'll continue to monitor as we get closer. And obviously, once Friday's injury report comes out a little bit later on here today, we might do a little bit of a bonus episode for you and everybody in Broncos country to keep you updated here. But let's talk about the defense here real quick. Josie Jewell, Broncos inside linebacker, has been a pivotal piece, has grown so much over the last several years in his role with Denver. He was asked the question about, you know, what's going on with the defense? What do they need to do in order to fix some of the things? Here's what he had to say. I well, need to slow down on the penalties. Uh, it's definitely a huge thing. I think that's number one for us. And then we need to create the turnovers. You know, we had at least two chances um, on those picks. So we need to be able to reel those in next time. Um, and then just be able to play fundamental football. Uh, stay where you're supposed to be. Don't try to do too much. Everybody do your job and just settle down. And if we do our own job, you know, we can, we can beat people. We're good enough on defense. Uh, we just need to be able to settle down and do that every single play. Josie Jewell, a man of few words and a guy who certainly knows the impact uh, a, a timely turnover can make, dating back to his time at Iowa, Cody, where, man, the defense is the offense a lot of times. And you necessarily, I think over the last few years, you've seen a lot of the same type of thing with the Denver Broncos, right? The defense needing to step up in big ways at certain moments in games in order for the offense to just get an opportunity to come back. Like, just give them even if they are only going to score 17 points, give them a chance to go out there and score 17. If you can win 17 to 16 or something like that. But Josie Jewell understands, you know, you get your hands on a football. You've got to be able to come down with that play. I, I, I watched that play against the commanders as I was rewatching the game. And I'm like, man, how did he miss that one? I guess that's why he plays linebacker. But look, there, there's opportunities like that that are going to come up and they're going to, they're going to be there, not just against teams like the Commanders, but say you're playing against, obviously, Tua this week or Patrick Mahomes down the line. You can't miss those chances. You can't miss those opportunities. And while I, I agree there should be no panic in the locker room, that sense of urgency to get things corrected, to not miss those opportunities has got to be there. And I get that vibe from listening to these guys talk as well. 100% too. And, and look, Josie's very... I think Josie's very open about how things are. And he's like, you know, hey, we 
we keep shooting ourselves in the foot. And, and a lot of it was going back to the point, we got to settle down defensively. We just got to lock in our jobs. And, you know, one thing about that locking into your jobs is the Miami Dolphins try to get you to think about not doing your job because they incorporate so much motion inside of their offense. Here's what Jewel had to say about what he thinks of the Miami offense and Tua Tonga by and what they bring to the table this week. Yeah, they got a fast offense. Um, uh, and they got a lot of window dressing out there. They got those guys on the outside. The running backs are really good. Um, the line's solid. I mean, yeah, they got a bunch of good players. So, uh, you know, we're going to have to bring again. Certainly going to see a lot of smoke and mirrors, a lot of motion, a lot of different guys doing a lot of different things before the snap. But you just got to settle down. You got to you got to make sure you're on your assignment. And for these Broncos players, it's you, you still got to be able to play fast and aggressive with all that. So it makes the Miami Dolphins very tough to play against, as we've seen the first couple of weeks. Right. They can do a lot of different things from their your their passing game to their running game to you know, whatever it may be, they they are able to give you multiple different looks, Cody, and really make it tough for a defense to play fast. That's what I think is it makes it almost impossible to kind of project. But if you're expecting to get into a close game, you got to be disciplined. You can't have those penalties that allow them to extend drives. If you get a, a big stop on third down, you can't be having this this late hit or anything like that that negates the big play that you just made. You've got to find a way to stay disciplined, but still play fast and aggressive. Fast and furious. That might be the theme here this week for the Broncos family. They got to stick together Damn. this year. But another thing, too, is offensive tackle Mike McGlinchey. He talked to us a little bit early on in the week about what he and the offense, what they gathered from the film and how they plan to attack things and what they need to do in order to get out of their own way. Here's what he had to say. I think there was a lot of good. I think um, the first couple, you know, obviously the first three drives were what they were, scoring touchdowns, touchdowns, touchdowns. And then, you know, we can't, we just can't have that lull that we did in the middle of the game there. Those five, those, you know, four or five drives that really stalled us, um, that we weren't able to produce any points or really even first downs to keep our defense off the field. Um, and then we came back a little bit in the fourth quarter and showed a lot of fight to execute long drives to get, to get some points and keep it, you know, a miracle shot to almost tie the game. And, um, you know, so there's a lot of positives to take from it. And I think the biggest thing is we gotta, we got to stop hurting ourselves uh, first and then we can, you know, worry about taking control and winning games. I think stalling is kind of the best way to put the way that things have been going, especially in the second half, right? I mean, we're seeing MVP caliber play from Russell Wilson in the first half of games where his QB rating in the first quarter is literally 158.3. It's perfection in the first quarter of games and then it drops to a whopping 141 in the second quarter so we're seeing the offense execute so well in the first half and i don't think cody correct me if i'm wrong the first half of games entirely is not scripted i mean you're having to go off yeah. the script at <laughs> some point in the first half there so they're doing something right and then something in the second half is just it's it's not clicking so what is it that's going to get them to stop stalling that is the biggest question that i have no, I agree with you as well. And, and, you know, maybe, hey, getting out of your normal routine, right? Denver's been at home for the first two weeks of the regular season. Well, now we know they're going to have two straight road games. Mike McGlinchey also touched on maybe how getting away from your normal routine in your own hometown or where you play could actually be a beneficial thing here for the Broncos. Here's what he had to say. It's incredibly important. Honestly, sometimes road games actually sometimes are a little easier to prepare for. Um, once you get, I think we're getting on the plane on Friday. That's a long flight to do a lot of prep and a lot of you know research and a lot of film work and all that kind of stuff. So um, I've always enjoyed going on the road. I think you can lock in a little bit, get away from your normal routine, and, and you got nothing else to do besides focus on football. Obviously, put ourselves in a little bit of a hole, and we got to bounce back, and that's what we're going to try to do against Miami. You know, I can really relate to that, Cody, because I was on my way home from a trip to see my, my sister-in-law get married over the weekend, and we went to the airport a few hours early, and I'm sitting there at the airport, and what did I do? I just bust out the laptop, and I, I go to work. You know, I start getting to work, because what else am I going to do? And so I get what McGlinchey's saying there. Hey, you're out of your routine. You don't have your Roku stick or your Amazon Fire stick or whatever it is <laughs> to, to put on your favorite shows and things. You got to, you know, you got to watch some film. You got to study you all you've got is is work to keep your mind busy. So I think that's a good point that he made and never really thought about it like that, where playing on the road could really be an advantage for these guys, as opposed to like a huge distraction of, hey, we're going to Miami. Let's go do these. No, you're out of routine. And so you really got to find ways to keep your mind busy. I think McGlinchey makes a great point. 
Well, Endeavor's going to have to find a way to become road warriors, right? You drop your first two home games, you have to win on the road now. I mean, it almost essentially becomes like, hey, our room for error coming into a road game is very, very minimal because obviously we know the crowd effect is there, which for some reason the commanders, they shook that off last week because it was electric at Empire Field the Mile High when Denver was up 21-3, to and then things just kind of went after that. So, uh, you know, it's a big test for them. We know it, Denver's going to have their hands full, but can they rise to the challenge here? I'm very eager to see how Sean Payton has this team prepared here for Sunday's game. 11 a.m. Mountain Time kickoff. You'll get an immediate post-game report here from myself and Sarah Bender. I'm not going to South Beach this weekend, so we'll have a chance to dive a little bit deep into what happened immediately following the show versus a few hours where I have to get out of the locker room. I have to travel through I-25's horrendous traffic, if you know what that's like, to get all the way back to where I live. So with that said, though, Broncos country, we're excited for Sunday's matchup. We're excited to be able to break it all down with you this season, every single day, all year long here on the Lockdown Broncos podcast. Sarah Bettinger and myself, if there's an update of significance on Justin Simmons, whether or not he will or will not play, when that comes out on Friday, we'll have you covered every step of the way. We'll do a bonus episode. If all things are clear, we'll see you for Sunday for the post-game report. Lockdown Broncos.